on, Duck Ducks. Hello, Mrs. Turkey. Come on, Duck Ducks. Oh, yeah. Look at all the Duck Ducks. Look that one's got a green bill. Remember I was talking about that? Let me see if I can get him closer. She got a green bill right there. Look at her. Only one solid green bill. It's that good green too, like that uh that olive green or that uh what do you call it? Uh I don't know. Some kind of green. Hello, duck ducks. Hello, marshmallow. Hello. Hello. You can tell Marshmallow, he's in the very back. He's got the grayest face. That's him in the very back there. Oh, Marshmallow, look at that. Hello, Duck Ducks. Hello. Hello, Duck Ducks. Oh, yeah, I really enjoy them. And they keep our pond unfrozen. Not 100%, but they do quite a good job at it. Hello, Duck Ducks. Come on, get your eat. I just can't get over that bill. I love it. And this is what I got at my feet. I got a bunch of Cochins and Mrs. Turkey. I think she's mad because I'm carrying the bucket over here and sharing the feed. Ha! Hello, little coachins. All right. Let's walk back on up here. Well, Mrs. Turkey. Yeah, see, she's trying to block my walking. Hello, little rooster. They're always a hoot in the morning. I always throw a little bit of food in the... Uh, barn here for Mrs. Turkey but the ducks come in and raid it. I'll give her a little something to do. There's Rambo. Good morning sir. How are you? I fixed your handiwork that you gave me over there that broken hydrant. Huh? You gonna leave now? Usually you like to talk about it. <laughs> All right, let me get you some hay. All right, here's your second helping. Boy, you like that, huh? That's some good stuff. There you go. Let me get that twine out of there. I don't like that. All right, you enjoying that? All right. Looks like you're enjoying it. All right, I'm gonna get them some water. We had some cold temps last night and all they had was ice. So you hold it. You can see the ice in the bucket even. Look at that. It got pretty cold last night. And that's one thing about watching videos, you can't tell how cold it is. Or how, hey, 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 hey. Or how much those uh, logs weigh. Those logs are heavy. You know, some places you watch videos and these guys are up in different areas of the country handling different types of wood and they're throwing it around. It looks like it's nothing, but you start putting some white oak and red oak in your hands. Some dense wood right there. So, Mr. Smokey's trying to give me the trouble because uh, we got some hay inside the barn and they have a round bale feeder right there. You can see it right there right there but he's not touching it i don't know if it's bad hay or something i don't know he's just being particular so he thinks he can come over here and work me for some kind of extra treat on his hay but it's not gonna happen but let's look inside this control panel here and see what happened overnight uh with the water staying on remember i told you guys i was going to show you how i put this together so what i did was i got one of these control boxes at the big box store it's like an irrigation uh dealio and then i just took a five gallon bucket and spun it upside down and then cut the hole out so i got plenty of room to get down to my ball, ball valve and that water in there is normal that was the water that was um inside the hole when i closed it up but i will keep an eye on it make sure it doesn't uh, get any higher and also that it does uh go away but i expect to have a little bit of water in here 
um, just because there was water around the area and I piled all this dirt in so it just squeezes it into this cavity. Because remember yesterday when I told you guys, water takes the path of least resistance. So that looks pretty good and I'm gonna go down there and check the other one and put the pop-up on it and show you guys what I was talking about there. All right, all right, so this is what's up. See, it's a lot different today because everything's frozen, so now it's not as muddy as it was yesterday. So this right here, I'm not too sure. I'm gonna probably bring the ground up here. So I have to be careful on how low I actually cut this thing. So I'm probably gonna keep it up a little bit. Maybe uh, something like this. And yeah, I can see the water there, right there. That's perfect. That's just what we want, actually. Then I'm gonna need a little piece of hose. It's kind of goofy because the uh, the pop-up, this pop-up that you get here, it only it I didn't find one that had you know was a straight one that could just go right into the end of this. So it's got a little a little dealio here. See that the way that hooks there. So I'm gonna have to have it like this. So I'm gonna need a little piece of my pipe here. Just as a little connector piece, which is fine. Gotta love a Sawzall. If you don't have a Sawzall around your homestead, you better get this on your list. You're gonna find out you're gonna use it a lot more than you ever thought you would, I guess. We use ours quite a bit. All right, so I'm just gonna smack this on here like this. Doesn't have to be nothing pretty. I just wanna make sure that the water can get up and get out. Put my little piece on right there. And then again, what I'll do is just probably use this during the winter time. And then I'll be able to uh, change it out. Wow, see that? This is why you get incomplete jobs. So what happens is, this is made for a four inch pipe, like a downspout on your, you know, the drain tile stuff you get at the Home Depot. But this is schedule 40, so it's fatter. The four inches is a little thicker. So when you get anything, you have to get the matching receptor. Uh, so this is a schedule 40, four inch, and you can see this collar on the end, it makes it a little bit bigger so it can connect to a four inch schedule 40 pipe. You could get uh, just regular four inch pipe and it's a little thinner, like for inside your house or something that's not gonna be outside in the elements. So now I'll have to come back and uh, put this on later, but you can see how it works. Basically the water pushes up this lid and then the water just comes out and it's just gonna saturate the ground and go on down this hill. So it actually is gonna work just fine but I have to get this connector. But that's not gonna stop me for right now. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take you guys inside and show you how it works. We're gonna turn on the pump and we're gonna watch it pump out the water right here. How about that? So let's go check it out. All right, I know you guys wanna see what's going on in the Learning Center. I'm almost close to showing you guys what's up, but you can see I finished off the walls. I got my, don't look too hard, Amish hot water heater that's coming up. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna hook that up and what that's all about. And then the solar stuff, there's the cabinet and the electrical stuff. So I'll be going over that with you guys too. Just stay tuned. These videos are coming every day, bro. So we're gonna go downstairs right now and I'm gonna show you guys the pump system that's in place and what's going on with the root cellar. All right, this is the root cellar. If you guys are new to the channel, during this last year, we actually built an ICF root cellar. ICF stands for insulated concrete forms. Two styrofoam sides with the concrete in the middle. And what that does is it allows the cold air to get trapped inside of this box. Traditional concrete basements are porous, so the heat transfers from the ground and from the interior of the house back and forth and back and forth, so you actually have to regulate the heat. With this system here, um, because it's airtight and everything's fine, it's gonna produce ground temperature inside of the room and it's gonna keep it there. So our root cellar with fresh air coming in in the winter time is gonna stay around 40 something degrees, basically about the temperature of a refrigerator. So basically we have built a huge walk-in refrigerator. So I'm gonna take you guys down. We have a whole playlist about this and you guys might wanna check it out. It's actually pretty good. And uh, we go over everything with you guys. We had some mishaps. 
and it actually is some good information for you guys. But I'm gonna take you guys down right now and show you exactly how this water is building up in here, and then uh, we'll turn that pump on and see how it pumps outside for us. We left a dirt floor in this root cellar. It's suggested um, if you look into root cellars and how they've all been constructed throughout all of millennia, um, the dirt floor is the best for the um, root cellar. And that's what we did. And then we just put a little gravel in here just in case if water got in here, we weren't in the mud or anything. Uh, so we do have gravel down, but we were getting a little too much water in here, okay? So then that's when I put in this pit. What this is, is like a sub pump. If you guys have a house, if you live on grid, a lot of people have these in their basements. It just keeps your basement from flooding. As this water fills up this pit, it triggers this float valve right here. And then that pumps all the water out of this pit and up this pipe that we put in. Now this right here is called a check valve. This allows the water to go up, but not back down in. Okay? So as this water goes up and then follows this pipe, it comes right here to the outlet. So this is the pipe outlet that we've been repairing outside, okay? This right here is gonna hook up to the sink that's gonna be up here, and then this right here is for the shower. So the water would back up the pipe outside that we fixed after I, it was pumping out of here for a while, because as you can see, we have a little water down here. It would pump through here, go into this pipe, that pipe would fill up because it had nowhere to go. That drain field was filled up, the ground was saturated, there was nowhere to go with the extra water. So it would travel back up this pipe and then it would spit out of this hole right here. We basically left this open for now just so it was like an air um, release. So when that water was going down in there, it wouldn't back up the air. So just allow that air. You always want to have that air to be able to escape when you're, you know, shoving something into a tube because <laughs> it builds up a lot of pressure so that's what we fixed so what we're going to do right now is we're going to turn on this pump and we're going to pump this water out of here and then we're going to see if it backs up out of there anymore so this is pretty slick uh, this is at the big box store there you go it's called the watchdog Right, so it's battery operated. It runs off this battery right here. And then when you plug it in, it trickle charges, right? Off of your solar power or your home power or whatever. And so that way you don't have to babysit your system. Like a lot of times when we lived on grid, when the power went out, we would automatically lose our sub pump because there was no power to the pump. <laughs> but now with this, it's trickle charging off that battery. The battery operates it and it's always getting charged. So it's just gonna operate all by itself whenever that flow file trips it. So we're gonna go outside. I'll show you guys what it looks like right now with the water coming out. working just like we said it would. So the water's being pumped out of here. Whatever water is on this floor is all gonna come down here to this pit. Okay, this is the lowest part of the floor. And it's gonna just gravity fill this pit up. And every time the pit fills up and it trips that valve, it's gonna kick the water out of here. The problem that I had before was there was so much water in that tube, I couldn't pump any more water out of here. So where's the water gonna go? It's gonna hit the floor and start causing these puddles and causing this mess down here. <laughs> So this feels pretty good to have this uh, situated and fixed. Glad you guys came along for that ride. And uh, I know you want to see this stuff we got going on in here, but I got to do a few more things before I show you the whole root cellar reveal. Well, hi, Molly. How are you? You want to come say hi to everybody? <laughs> there they are. They want to see you too. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, I love these Airedale Terriers on the homestead. Great farm dogs. Well, that's what's going on. You guys saw two successful uh, parts of the project completed yesterday. Today, we followed up with it. We showed you guys how we're gonna fix that um, outlet there with the pop-up, and that's gonna work out just fine. I just gotta get a little connector that can join those two together, which is no big deal. And then I'll get the ground around that figured out uh, when it gets a little nicer out. It's freezing cold out right now. It's probably about 28 to 29 degrees, so. Yep, those are the updates on the homestead. I like to see when everything comes together and it just works out fine. So stay tuned tomorrow. 
You never know what's gonna happen. Thanks a lot for coming along on the journey, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Oh, and stay tuned, we gotta hook up that solar. Oh, my God.